Took a bite out of mountain range Thought my teeth would break the mountain Let's go, I wanna go All the way to the horizon I Took a drink out of the ocean and Tread water there before I drown Let's dive, I wanna dive To the bottom of the ocean I'm Simon. Hello, I'm James. Hello, I'm Brian. We are Biffy Clyro. You can't take that away from me. Cause you tear us apart. So what, who was starting the band first? Who was playing together? How did it happen? Well, um, me and James are twins and uh, we were just kind of best pals at school and we kind of gravitated towards this wee music room that was uh, beside the, the stage in the, the hall of the, of the school and we just sit and mess around and play songs and uh, it kind of built its way to this. <laughs> what bands really inspired you when you were getting you had that young passion? What the bands that really sort of like, oh, we want to do something like that? Um, I guess at that point it was probably bands from Seattle like Nirvana yeah. and oh, Pearl Jam, Jam yeah, and yeah. Sound Garden and just, you know, they really had a huge effect on us, I guess, you know, just they seemed so exotic from so far away. At that time in this country it was Oasis and Blur, which although we have huge respect for them now, it wasn't as exciting to us at that point. You're looking for something that's of another world. and yeah. So really like a lot of guys our age, Nirvana, were the band that really made us pick up instruments in the first place. I am the sea Cause you tear us apart With all the things you don't like You can't understand Were the times of the last couple of years when you thought maybe it's just going to stay at this level, we're never going to get up to the kind of next phase, you know, when it really sort of when bands have that tipping point, don't they? Yeah, th I think um, it, you, you don't really think about that too much. I think it's something, you know, we've been kind of not cocky but confident enough to kind of think, oh, well, if people don't get it, it's not really our problem, you know? <laughs> and, you know, that's that's not to say we're, you know, as I say, arrogant or anything, but it's just we've always enjoyed what we've done and, and you know, we've taken influences from our favourite bands and things. So, you know, it's um, it wouldn't have worried us if, you know, if people hadn't caught on because we would have stuck at it and firmly believed that we are kind of a really good band. I think there's different areas of music really, you know, someone like Calvin and I'm sure he'll be the first to admit, I mean it's it's about the songs, it's about having a summer hit and all that and the way that people are kind of consuming that with the streaming, you know, that there's not as quick a turnaround because some, you know, people listen to a song for I don't know, like 180 times in a yeah. row. You know what it's like when you're, you know, when you're really young, you just keep press repeat. But for us, the art form of the album and everything, it's a different. Hmm. Hopefully, we inhabit a different space than that. And you know, it, it's kind of up to the bands and the artists out there to make people still be interested in albums and things, and make sure that every song in the album is the best thing you've ever done. And you know, and, and don't just put filler on there. The world is definitely changing, but as I say, I think it's up to the, the art that you present. That if you present something good enough and, and that's a complete package, then people will be interested. You Again, last year, the, the problem when I started trying to write the songs was I was thinking about the big shows and all that, and I was thinking, right, I need to make, write a song that fits this festival or something. And, and we've never written songs like that, and you can tell when something's forced.
think we thought a lot about the band going through a period of rebirth. You know, certainly with the music, we tried to tackle things in a new way and working with a new producer, Rich Costey. It felt like we were starting again as a band um, after six albums. So uh, I, I think it kind of it hints towards that. It hints at the rebirth as a as a band, and we just wanted to strip everything away and um, and just be left with a very stark image of us. Not hiding behind anything, not trying to look sexy or anything like that. <laughs> As a band, after six or seven albums, it's it, it's up to us to have a reason to make new records, and, and we don't want to be the kind of band that d does the same record over and over. We'd much rather take a chance and and, and make something awful, or you know, th than just do the same thing. And and I feel like I feel like we've found a new area for our band to explore. We know that when we play live, we're, we're always going to be a rock band. We're a heavy rock band. That's what we love. You know, that's that's what makes us get up on stage every night. But not every record has to be the same. I like to treat every record like it's our like it's our second record. That you're just trying to kind of set out your stall of what you do. And I always want to feel slightly unsure of what we're doing. I think if you feel too comfortable, then you're you've taken the easy route. And and for me, I always want to feel a little bit worried that oh, are we taking this too far? Is this too poppy? Is this too crazy? The real one is always let's not repeat. You know, like, like yeah. it gets harder after every record. But whenever we have a song that sounds familiar or like a song in a previous record, we try and just immediately remove it. So, yeah. so that's the, always the toughest part is just finding that new path. You say I love you, boy, but I know you lie. We pride ourselves at being a well, hopefully a good live band. Maybe the best now, apparently. But uh, can you hold that up for the camera? Yeah, it's, it's official. Um, but yeah, I mean, we started out as purely a live band. We pride ourselves in kind of bringing as much as we can to the live arena, and we love it. You know, you guys, uh, you are go always on stage naked, like. Uh, uh, with no shirts on. What is it about? You have to wear something special on stage? Yeah, I think it kind of feels like uh, like armor, I think, even though that's the opposite of what we do, we take our armor off, but it, it puts you in a headspace where you, you, feel, you feel mildly ridiculous walking on stage without a top on, and it just feels like it's us against the world, and I think that's kind of just gives us energy and excitement and and we also it's nice to show the crowd it's not so bad today but when it's raining and we go on with our shirts so it's to show that we're with the crowd you know like we're not pussies that can hang backstage in our in our dressing rooms you know like we you know we're happy to be a part of it and and I don't think we could play a show with clothes on now it would feel like a rehearsal it would feel like we were practicing so so I'm afraid you're going to be seeing our hairy hairy bellies for the next 20 years or whatever. <laughs>
Yeah.